Hello, everyone. Good morning. My name is Harpreet Singh. I'm the founder and co-CEO of Expertify. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Expertify, Expertify is a big data analytics and IoT marketplace where we are being, we are based in the Harvard Innovation Lab, and uh, we focus on two things. One is consulting, which is uh, project-based consulting where companies come and they post their projects on Expertify. And also we have a training platform where we create industry-driven courses with industry experts, uh, all in the big data and IoT space. Uh, today it's my pleasure to introduce to you uh, two uh, speakers who are presenting on uh, IoT and the insurance industry, how the insurance industry is being transformed with the advent of IoT. Uh, the first uh, person is Chow Trong. He's a, a senior manager in Accenture's global Oracle practice uh, with 15 years of hands-on experience with Oracle technology. Uh, Chow focuses on uh, a number of uh, emerging technologies, engineering systems, uh, Oracle Cloud, uh, and uh, you know he has a very impressive resume. Uh, we, we are very fortunate to have him uh, uh, speaking to us today uh, on the business use cases of IoT. And the second person is Subhashi Shacharya. He serves as an Alliance Strategy Director at Oracle and has managed Oracle's business relationship with Accenture for the last four years. And uh, he he's, has a passion for looking at go-to-market strategies and business developments and a focus on cloud, big data, and IoT technologies. Uh, Subhashish is better known, known as Subs, and in his spare time, he runs a nonprofit called Project Starfish, which creates employment for unemployed, blind, people with disabilities, veterans, and cancer survivors in over seven countries. Uh, so he, he's uh, very busy, as you can see. Uh, with the, this introduction, I would like to pass on the presenter role to Chow, who will uh, start the presentation. Uh, just as a protocol, what I would uh, request is that if you have questions, please do enter them in the questions tab uh, on, your, on the right-hand side. And at the end of the presentation, we will take all the questions. Uh, so. Uh, with that, uh, I'm going to uh, pass this on to Chow. Chow? Harpreet, thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Let me <clears throat> try to present here. OK, let me know if you can see my screen. Um, Harpreet, can you see my screen? Yes, I can, okay. yes. OK, good. So I'll get started. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Uh, what I want to do is give you guys a glimpse of some of the things that we're doing around IoT. Uh, you know, talk about a specific use case that we're we're looking at in around the uh, transformation of the insurance industry. Um, so the way I want to present this is kind of give you a couple slides on the industry. Um, you know, some background information uh, on IoT, uh, and then go into kind of the solution that we kind of built. Uh, for this particular industry and then give you a short demo to, to show you um, kind of what we've done uh, in real life. Um, <clears throat> sorry, let me move my slides here. So just to kind of start off with an icebreaker, I, I tend to show uh, this comic strip um, with Dilbert. Um, so here, you know, a, the, the manager goes to the employees and says, hey, wear this biosensor so management can monitor your health, right, during the day. And uh, the employee says, wow, I, I didn't know you care so much about my health. And uh, the manager says, oh, I do. But then behind the scenes, uh, the manager will monitor employee 479, determines that employee 479 doesn't, does have shallow, doesn't have shallow breathing, so we can send them more work. So probably one of the good use cases not to use IoT. Um, but I, I do want to start off with that to give you a flavor of um, kind of what IoT is doing and some of the disruption that it's causing in the workplace today. So to give you an overall industry background, I think everyone's aware digital is here, digital is everywhere. Basically being online and being connected um, is a really relevant thing and everyone's talking about it, right? You know, nowadays 
You can be connected through your home. You can be connected through your car. Um, a lot of the use cases that we see now in the medical industry, especially around the insurance um, industry, is you know doctors and nurses being more connected using uh, devices, using wearables, also medication, right? Putting um, connected uh, you know pills and medications and, and giving that to consumers to consume and tracking their health data has become a phenomenon. Um, if you see the statistics down here, um, from a mobile health perspective and a fitness perspective, um, they're you know analysts are projecting that they're going to be shifting over half a billion uh, worth of devices uh, to consumers. Um, this is probably an eight billion dollar um, industry, um, and 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 a lot of people over half that uh, has been interviewed are willing to um, wear connected devices in order to trade that information and provide that uh, that you know, uh, the, the biometrics and their health related information to either health insurance, employers, or um, <clears throat> data scientists to kind of analyze some of their activities. To, to further kind of expand on the, the health landscape and some of the business that we see here, um, over 80% of, of companies are uh, introducing or running wellness programs, right? Um, they're making big investments. Probably, you know, they're they're, they're spending about over seven hundred dollars per person per employee. Um, big companies are also investing heavily in IT and IoT, um, and then of course IoT plays a big part. It's a, it's a thirteen million dollar industry focused around just the fitness wearables um, division, um, but there are other things, as I mentioned before, like connected pills. And, and sensors and case management studies that IoT is also being, playing a big part as well. So, so this is what we see as the future, right? As we, as we move away from the old generation where we do paper-based activities to now more of a digital workplace, um, we, we are seeing more and more employees um, having the ability to sign forms online as opposed to fax, right? We're seeing more and more people wearing things as you know fitness trackers or Google glasses to get real-time analytics and real-time um, you know scheduling and information um, without actually uh, writing things down or accessing a computer right everything comes to them um, there are beacons in the field that can collect data and then translate and transmit that data to ingest um, for the users um, and, and stuff so this is this is becoming, you know, social collaboration using Twitter, using social feeds and stuff like that has been a big phenomenon. Sharing photos, sharing information. This is the digital worker of the future. And uh, um, as I go through some of the materials later, I will show you how we're taking some of these pieces and making it real um, for the insurance company. So the particular business case that I want to share with you guys today or the use case um, is around the wellness program, right? Uh, I mentioned earlier that 80% of the companies out there run one form of a wellness program in one form or another. So let's talk about some of the business benefits. There are three main business benefits that I want to talk about um, as I venture into the solution. The first one is around the employee or the workforce, right? By, by equipping themselves with wearables these days, this, these are Fitbits, Apple Watches, Garmin, whatever the case may be, that tracks their health related information. They're, they're willing to live healthier lives and get more informed information on how to be healthier um, by, by wearing these wearables. In, in exchange, you know, we, we're able to track automatically their, their health specific activities and then taking that information and, and running analytics on and top of that to see if we can help the employees become healthier or have a better well-being. So that, that's one business benefit by, by wearing those wearables. The other, the other benefit of having a connected wellness platform is for the company, right? The comp like the Googles, the Accentures, the, um, you know, the, the, the Oracles of the world, right? Companies um, are willing to stand up wellness platforms so that it can alleviate and help employees to have ultimately, if they're healthier and they're more active, you know, uh, report less sick days or, or reduce the number of visits that go to the doctors, right? Um, and, and in turn, by, by not being as, as sick or not going to the doctors as often, um, employees can negotiate reduction in premiums that they pay to, 
to their employees with uh, big insurance companies. And then the third, the third big, the, the third business benefit as well is also the insurance companies also benefits from this as well, right? By by having less visits to doctors, by um, not going to the pharmacy, um, and, and not you know getting their prescription medication as often, this actually reduces um, claims costs and, and overhead that uh, associate with claims costs like management overhead and whatnot. Um, so the, the insurance also saves money um, in that perspective, and then with that saving, could eventually um, you know negotiate and, and give that savings back to the enterprise or the employer to reduce the premiums that they pay on a yearly basis. So those are the business the, the business benefits that I'm going to be showing you in the use case that I have today. Um, let's jump into kind of the scenario. Um, hopefully, this will resonate with many of you on the call today, but. The scenario here is, is just going back to the use case and the business benefits that I mentioned earlier, right? Is this all centered around the employee? It's all centered around the individual um, and in making their, their lives healthier and, and better um, and, and increasing their wellness, right? So if we can track their stats and we can give them feed and feedback and real time information on how to you know, be more efficient with their diet, be more efficient with their exercise, reminding them when to when to exercise when to you know instead of taking the elevator maybe walk up the, sta the stairs you know maybe during lunch instead of eating lunch um, you know in the cafeteria maybe you know bring your own lunch and have a jog or walk outside during lunch and be a little bit more active right little things like that can go a long way so really how do we collect that information automatically without burning burdening the employees so using IOT and wealth uh, sorry and using wearables to track that health information is, is one way of doing that. The other way is around you know, health plan managers and campaign managers to invigorate or motivate employees. Right? There, you know, once we collect that data, the, the, the health data from their trackers, one of the biggest things that we see is you know, employees or individuals, you know, especially with their personas, if they're, you know, if they're a a, you know, a young professional working and they have kids or they have family, they may not be as active as the younger generations, right? So it's very important for, for us to collect that information, learn about those personas of those individuals, and then feed that information to campaign managers or health plan managers so that they can create engaging um, challenges or wellness programs or campaigns around motivating them to kind of have healthy competitions or encourage them to go out and incentivizing them for being more active, you know, instead of eating lunch in the cafeteria, walking during lunch, or uh, snacking better, um, you know, creating those in innovative uh, campaigns is another way to incentivize and motivate employees, right, to increase their health activities. But also, data scientists can use that information um, to to you know look at unreached potential areas, right? Look at geographies to look at you know, potential age bands to see which age group respond better to certain campaigns, um, you know, based on location, based on where you are and where you live, right? And at the end of the day, right, feeding all that information back to the financial analysts to kind of run the numbers, figure out how much it's going to cost to run these campaigns, um, how much is it to cost to incentivize by either giving, giving away prizes or giving away incentives or just a friendly gamification of badges to um, to encourage them to um, you know compete healthy more to have more healthy competition, all of that has a, a financial burden and a financial impact. Um, and and through the demo, I'll, I'll show you how we bring all that together. So what we've done at Accenture is you know we built our own kind of wellness platform based on kind of new IT concepts. Um, this is this is definitely not a wellness platform that's supposed to replace or compete with other wellness platforms in an industry. Um, more, this is more of showing how we can quickly develop a custom wellness platform from scratch using platform as a service and using the cloud and using some of the you know I mentioned earlier around the digital worker um, capabilities. Um, this is really a way to build out the solution quickly. Um, with an agile methodology, um, but at the same time realizing and, and hopefully um, achieving a lot of the business benefits that I mentioned earlier, right? 
And so what I've done is uh, we built out this, this little demo um, and, and the, the wellness platform that we built out that's very custom and very tailored towards any individual. Um, but these are some of the capabilities that we provided in that uh, connected, uh, the connected platform, right? The ability to connect to wearable devices. Um, in the demo, I'll show you how we connect to Fitbit uh, wearables. We'll connect to Apple Watches um, using mobile devices like the iPhone and the Samsung phones. Um, so those are kind of the automatic tracking of the IoT devices. Um, you know, in the platform that we built, we also have recommended targets. So if if users have a, a intended goal of 10,000 steps a day, um, we can take some of that information and then maybe make recommendations on increasing that based on the active lifestyle of that individual. And we built a nice engaging uh, portal page that allows users to enroll, uh, enroll their devices, log in, track their health activities, um, earn, earn points, earn badges and, and gamifications um, so that it encourages them to be more active. Um, so that's, that's the benefits on the workforce, right? The, the benefits on the business side, which is the employer, uh, basically allows what we call wellness admins to, um, to create their own engaging campaigns. It allows the wellness admins to um, define interventions. So based on some of the analytics, um, they may have to intervene and, and schedule one-on-one -on -one, uh, appointments with the individuals to kind of walk through some of their, their programs and some of their activities. But also to provide the business insight on, on how the individuals are performing, uh, some of the thresholds that they're, they're not meeting or are meeting, um, and then also to trigger more incentives to really engage with the employees to, to get them to be more active, right? And hopefully that will increase loyalty, um, that will get them excited, and, and it will increase employee retention because they want to, they, you know, they feel like they, um, they have a better place to work. And then last but not least, the, the big heavy insurance company, they also be the benefit as well, right? So if, if I mentioned earlier, you know, if, uh, if you're more active, you're less likely to become sick. Um, if you exercise regularly, you're less likely to visit the doctors more often, um, which means that uh, the number of claims that's being processed by the insurance company could potentially go down, which means the administrative and the operational costs of that um, also goes down as well, which means that uh, insurance companies can actually offer more competitive premiums um, at a lower cost to businesses um, to, to run some of their healthcare um, initiatives. How do we do that? How do we create a custom wellness platform um, instead of buying one off the market and paying you know, extremely expensive um, costs to run that? You know, what if you want to build that on your own because you want to customize it tailored to your needs, tailored to your business processes? Well, we're, we're leveraging new IT, right? We're leveraging more lightweight concepts we're leveraging things that are traditionally uh, more, more friendly for digital solutions as opposed to the heavyweight um, on-prem solutions that we're, we're used to dealing with, right? So instead of creating web services, now we're looking at doing real-time API calls. Um, we're having a more lightweight architecture using more lightweight, lightweight languages such as Node.js or Ruby's on Rail or PHP. Um, and then using more lightweight databases such as MongoDB or Cassandra, right, to kind of um, go through and, and do searches on certain metadata or certain um, what we call big data components, which are unstructured data, right? And then how do we gauge, how do we create enriching um, UI platforms so that users can log in, right? Um, so, you know, we're using CSS, we're using JavaScript, HTML5, these are all kind of the industry digital um, lightweight browser platforms because nowadays you know browser compatibility has been a, an ongoing and big issue so you want to write code that can be um, uh, adopted by all browsers as opposed to creating code specifically for a particular browser and then last but not least how do you quickly deploy this right doing everything as a service in the cloud right using docker which are container based um, solutioning so that you know you can plug and play different parts of your solution as opposed to being coupled and hard coding a lot of your 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 functionality within the application now you can break that out create microservices um, and then have it container based so that you can kind of plug and play rip it out if you have you know 
a, a container for Fitbit and you decided that you didn't want to use Fitbit anymore and you want to use Garmin watches, how do you replace that code without breaking the back-end functionality? So you use you know, containerization to do that um, so that you can compartmentalize all your different code base. So that's from the IT perspective. You know, you know, we, from an Accenture perspective, has teamed up with Oracle. We're using their cloud, uh, what they call SaaS, PaaS, and, and infrastructure as a service, um, and then really marrying the different, different comp cloud components together to kind of bring together a, a single solution to customers to consume. Um, just to quickly give you guys kind of the reference architecture um, around IoT, um, th this is a picture I show where, you know, the front end, which is the edge tier, is basically how do you collect that raw data from the wearables, from the IoT, the beacons, the gateways, the things, if you will, um, that sits on someone's wrist or, or is embedded in some type of machinery, right? How do we take that information, connect that, and then uh, ingest that data into a platform where you actually can store your metadata, store your big data, store your structured, unstructured data into one common repository, uh, you know, build business processes on top of that, um, build orchestration, um, and then, you know, farm that information out to back-end services like analytics engines or marketing engines to create those campaigns or, or data warehouses to mine the data, um, especially to give that to data scientists to really um, evaluate and, and understand the data, and then building a mechanism to, to take actions on that data, right? Setting that integration back to the platform tier so that that, that orchestration can be done to, uh, to, in, to, to give back those tasks to the users, to ask the users to do something differently um, or to provide information um, so that they can actually take action items on themselves, like running strong campaigns to invigorate and to motivate them to be more active, right? Things like that, the mechanism to pass back that information and, and take action on that information once we consume that raw data um, is very powerful. Um, this, this slide here kind of shows from an Oracle flavor what Oracle Cloud we are using. Um, so probably won't go into detail on here, but just know that Oracle has, and I think Subes will cover this um, at the end of the presentation, but Oracle has several cloud capabilities that offers um, features and functions across the board, right? So the, any functionality, any business process that we try to create from this wellness program or platform, um, there, there's a Oracle Cloud that allows us to do that. If we want to run analytics, um, BI Cloud, Oracle's BI Cloud allows us to do that. If we want to run, uh, if we want to create engaging mobile applications and storing documents on mobile phones and stuff, Mobile Cloud Service is a perfect um, use case for that. If we want to connect the devices, the things, the, the beacons, the gateways, I, Oracle's IoT Cloud allows us to do that. And then I mentioned earlier the containerization, right? Putting code into a very modular and container-based um, container um, uh, code set, the, the, the uh, application container cloud allows us to do that. So this is just a mapping back to the Oracle products. Um, and and I, don't want this, I know this chart is, a little, is an eye chart, but uh, this is basically the integration solution architect that we use. How do we, how do we get the API calls directly from the actual devices um, into our cloud? How do we store that information in the cloud so that analytics can be, um, can be analyzed? And then how do we create engaging campaigns um, based off of that information and in tracking the, the progress of those campaigns. So this is kind of the overall solution architect that we have. It, it, it's, main, it's mainly to illustrate the complex integration that happens at every single layer. It talks to multiple clouds. It's just not one perfect cloud where all the features and capabilities exist. It's, it's a component of many different clouds. And then, of course, the, the biggest challenge is how to get the different clouds talking to each other with the protocols available and then with all the security layers that we need to adhere by um, can become a challenge, right? And then this is where we help customers kind of drill down to that solution and help them kind of um, piece together that blueprint um, for the entire solution. So the demo that I'm going to show you is going to be uh, based off of this solution architecture. Um, and the three things that I want to show you in the demo um, 
is one, the real-time integration that we pull data from the actual wearables devices, ingest that into our repository. We have a nice UI that we built in order to display, so it's a single canvas to display all the health data that we just extracted from those devices. And then the analytics, the BI side, where we run some analytics based on that data and we can take actions based on some of those, um, those, uh, those use cases. Okay, so um, keep in mind this is a live demo. I haven't been in the system in a while, so hopefully it goes smoothly. But um, if it doesn't, bear with me. But uh, I'm going to go ahead now and go straight to the demo here. So again, we, we're building a customized wellness platform that has the ability to connect to devices real time, run challenging campaigns to, in, to motivate employees to be more active and to encourage friendly competition, and then run the analytics and, and see what data that we can uh, mine from that to, uh, to take actions on. So first of all, I have my, I'm gonna demonstrate the integration of my Apple Watch. So I'm gonna log in um, as my Apple user. I haven't synced all day today or yesterday. Oh, apologize here. Let me change my password. Okay. So one of the one of the analytics that we want to capture is kind of emotional and mental health, right? Um, that also feeds into some of the um, health-related information as well. And so much like when you travel through the airport or through customs, you have this button that says, how are you feeling today? We also have a similar uh, message on when we log into the page, right? It asks you how you're feeling. If, if, you're constant, if you're constantly stressed or you're just feeling okay, we can collect that metric. And we collect that metric twice a day, and then we can run analytics to determine your me mental health and mental stability. So I'm feeling great today. Uh, how are you energized, right? You, are you very low in energy? Are you always tired? Or are you fully energized, right? So from the scale um, of one to five, um, we do a poll. So I'm pretty energized today because I'm presenting to you guys. I'm gonna save this. And this is our main dashboard, right? Uh, before I go into some of these little clicks here, um, I'm gonna click on the dashboard here. This is my single canvas to show all of my activities. Um, I'm going to look at my watch right now. Sorry, I have to put my watch back on. Right now, I, I haven't synced, so it says that I have 1,144 steps. Uh, my active calories is, I burned 15 calories. I've been active for one minute today. I've walked um, less than a, oops, sorry. I walked, um, you know, less than a kilometer no floors, no sleep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my phone here, and you, you don't see it. I'm going to sync my, my data off of my Apple into my app here, uh, into my app on my phone. And then in turn, my, my app on my phone will connect to the platform and pull that data real time. Okay. So on my phone, I mean on my Apple Watch right now, it says that I have 1,400 and 42 steps. So if I so I just synced on my app on my phone. If I were to refresh this page, now real time, my step count just increased to 1,442 because I've been walking around this morning. And like I said, at any point in time, I can go into this dashboard, refresh the page. As long as I sync on my phone, um, that's the gateway that allows me to talk to my Apple Watch or my wearable device. I can pull all the data off of my devices real time. So my calories increase, my active minutes increase, my floor counts increase. So um, again, these are all the health data that is tracked on my Apple Watch. Now I have all that being displayed real time on a dashboard that I have here. The, sec the second thing I want to show you is, you know, actually the other thing I want to show you is, you can also go back and see, you know, what my step counts were for you know, yesterday the day before that. If I want to see a, a, a trend on some of the activities that I have, if I click on the steps, now I have a nice 
graph, you know, this red line here shows my goal. So I set um, to have 10,000 steps as my goal every day. And so every time I've exceeded my goals, I get a nice star here. And then the ones where I don't have, uh, if I don't, if I haven't achieved my um, my goal, I don't I don't get a star. But this this shows you kind of the progression of how active I am for last week. And I'll show you in a little bit later how we take this data, um, aggregate all together, and use it as real time analytics to take actions on that. The other things I want to show you is campaigns. Remember. In order to motivate, one of the things that we learned that you know uh, individuals will not um, they unless they're engaged and unless they're incentivized, they they they, they typically think that wearables are just a, a fad, right? But if we can if we can engage with them and and make it interesting, make it challenging, and also make it fun for them, they're more willing to be engaged, right? So to do that, we run campaigns for those engagements. Um, if I click on here, Project Team Daily Step Challenge. Um, so these are some of the campaigns that we run. So for for, for this particular um, for particular for this particular campaign, the incentive here is they're going to get badges when they, they when they're the, the winner of the campaign or they fall into the top ten. And uh, basically, the campaign is start small. And maintain a recommended number of steps per day, and the recommended number of steps is 6,000 steps per day. So at the end of the day, um, this campaign is ran as a test campaign just for my Apple Watch and my uh, and my Fitbit watch, right? So obviously, I've been wearing my Fitbit, um, and and I have basically I haven't been wearing my Apple Watch for this campaign. The duration of this campaign is from. July the 1st to July the 8th. So I wasn't sure exactly what, what, I, what I was doing, but I, I wasn't wearing my Apple Watch, but I did wear my Fitbit. I think I was testing my Fitbit out. And basically, I walked almost 93,000 steps. So I've exceeded the, the goal of that campaign. So when I log in as my Fitbit, you will see that I, I've actually won this campaign. But here, um, I, I'm logged in as my Apple, and, um, and I haven't had any steps there. So. This is another way to kind of engage and um, and encourage employees to have healthy competitions, right? And there are several campaigns. You can create a campaign based on, and then we have leaderboards to show how you're ranking with your peers who are also invited to that same campaigns. So this is again a little healthy competition gets them excited, gets them motivated to actually um, participate and leverage and use the the wearables, and then also to encourage them to be healthier. Um, and more active with their lives. Okay, so I showed you the real-time integration with the raw data from the actual wearables. I showed you how do we incentivize and also how we engage with employees by running effective campaigns. Um, the last thing I want to show you is um, the analytics. So um, here's my dashboard on all my BI data that comes in um, from the, the tracker, right? So I have a nice dashboard that gives me a summary Right of all the users in the system, um, I have a t you know I have a total step count of 934 million steps that's taken by all the users in the system. Um, on average, uh, people are taking 5,000 steps a day, pretty low, right? So in, in order to increase that, uh, that's where the campaign comes in, is to help in, in, invigorate and motivate them to to get that to get that step count up. Normally, the American Heart Association recommends around 10,000 steps a day. So this is pretty low as an overall. Um, we have eight active campaigns right now. Um, and then the participation, people who participating and opt into those campaigns, we have a 41% participation rate, right? So this kind of gives you a healthy dashboard on some of the analytics that we, that we store uh, on the platform. The second piece of analytics I want to show you is campaign effectiveness. Um, so it's great to run campaigns, but campaigns also cost a lot of money, right? And so we want to know how effective those campaigns are. Um, one of the things that we can do is these are all the test campaigns that we've ran um, in the past uh, two or three months. The color coordination here shows you um, who has participated in these campaigns. So, so basically, if you take a look here, um, <coughs> the red means that you, know, you have low participation, which is basically below 40%. But anything above 40% or above 
you get a, a orange and green. So you know that you know make friends stay fit campaign um, is more is more effective than the um, the the Santa challenge because typically during the time frame of December people are on vacation they have Christmas so they may not be as engaging right but but you know making friends healthy competitions they're more responsive to that right so here this gives you kind of an idea of how effective these campaigns are based on the opt-in and participation rates um, if I go to um, and if I want to dig deeper into the make friends, or let's say I go into the Santa Santa challenge, which is very low, right? Um, you know, th these are some metrics on the the average step counts within that campaign, and then um, the average um, change by the users. So these are some analytics that you can run campaign by campaign basis, right? And again, this is pulled in real time from our database, so this is real time analytics. The other thing, this other chart here shows you is um, for the months that we run campaigns, so all the blue bars shows you the months that we run certain campaigns. And if you notice, the green and the, um, the yellow are basically participants who are opting into that campaign tend to have more activity when we promote those different campaigns. For individuals who are not participating and they're just kind of users in the system, that's the that's the yellow line here, right? And as you notice, right, when we introduce campaigns or at least effective campaigns, we sh we notice that people who opt into those campaigns really increases their their activity uh, once they are in that campaign because it motivates them to do so. The other the other metrics that we can see also is we can filter by activity level, career levels. So within Accenture, if I click on career levels, you know we have we have career levels. Um, four is kind of the highest career level, which is basically our managing directors, and then nine and ten are our analysts, right? And then our senior managers and managers are in the middle here. So career level five and six are senior managers and managers. If you notice the color coordination here, based on some of the campaigns that we run, um, you've noticed that the trend here is the 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 analysts, the the consultants. The younger generation within our company, they tend to be more active. So you see the light green here, and they also participate more in a lot of these campaigns. Where because they have the time, they may they you know they, they may be excited because you know health is a big thing on their agenda. But if you look at kind of the the senior or the more um, older you know uh, personas within our organization, they may be zero to very low participation because either they're stuck on projects, they're busy delivering, they're busy with their kids, they have family, and so their participation are a bit lower. So this kind of gives you an idea of how to target certain campaigns to certain career levels, right? So if the, if the user persona is an older person who's a mother, who has kids, and who works long hours, maybe, maybe we tailor a campaign that is you know the incentive is to give them free daycare or give them free days off from work so that you know it would it will motivate them to actually participate and be more active so that they're working towards a goal that they actually can realize as opposed to an incentive for the younger crowd where if you give them a free watch or give them some prizes as far as free gift certificates to Amazon they they may care about that more because that's their interest versus uh, the the single mom where they rather have their daycare being paid for or their time off from from work so they can spend more time with their kids so this is just another way of showing the participation rates by career levels you can change it by gender you can see you know um, based on the male or female um, the participation um, based on those campaigns uh, age band as well right you can you can track to see um, which age group is more active um, and not active. So that's that's more on the um, I'll call it the employee slash um, company side, right? Enterprise side. Now, what about you know cost of campaigns and also health claims? How how does this data can translate to um, decrease visits to the doctor's office, decrease number of claims being processed per year? So some of the analytics that we see here. Um, if I take a look at the graph on the top here, you can see that 
uh, for the for the months that we actually run active campaigns, so in the middle of the year and towards the end of the year, right? Um, we notice that number of claims actually start decreasing um, once we start engaging and um, and getting employees to be more active and more more physically uh, or introducing healthy competition, getting them more active and getting them more um, <clears throat> more participating in some of these um, activities which means that uh, in turn they, they are getting healthier, they may not need to, you know, instead of drinking that sugary drink, they're drinking water. Um, so campaigns could be a water campaign where, you know, you know ditch the, the sugary sodas, drink more water. If you drink more water, then we can give you incentives, we can give you badges, we can give you whatever the case may be. So these are the types of campaigns that you can run that potentially can, um, you know, in turn get the employees to be healthier, right? Same thing with here. The rolling costs, uh, the rolling average cost of claims, also increase over time um, because we're also we're encouraging um, uh, employees to to get out there and be more active. These are some of the campaign costs. I'm sorry. These are some of the claims costs uh, per quarter, and, and these are some of the um, the claim claim costs um, by injecting some of those uh, campaigns, and you can see. Um, some of those costs going down. Okay, and then the last the last graph I want to show you is um, the effectiveness of running campaigns. So these dots here represents the costs. Well, actually, these dots represents all of these campaigns that we're running. The size of the dots shows you the cost of each of these campaigns that we run. So if you take a look at the graph here, um, uh, running specific step campaigns. Um, there's there's a cost associated to run those step campaigns. So for this for this particular campaign here, billion step challenge, right? Um, the cost is you know the cost is pretty high, right? Um, but um, and 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 well, it's not pretty high. It's pretty kind of in the middle of the road here. But uh, but it has a lot of step counts, meaning a lot of people participated. And there's a lot of steps being walked into this campaign. So to me. This is very effective, right? Because you got you got people walking more, and then the cost is relatively in the middle, right? But this yellow one right here, you have low low step counts, which means low participation. Um, but then the cost is very high here. You know, almost seventy percent of the cost is is um, is dedicated to running this campaign. So this may not be as an effective campaign as this campaign. So. Wellness campaign uh, admins can look at these different campaigns, compare, and, and determine in the future if they want to continue running these different campaigns or have the same campaigns being run over and over again because they're very effective. Right? You can also look at the different campaigns for um, the cost for each campaign you know, by gender, by, again, activity level. So this could be um, steps or calories or whatever the case may be. Um, if I look at again career levels, right? My senior managers versus my analysts. Um, you know how you know how are they faring compared to these individual um, campaigns that we run? Okay, so that gives you a flavor of some of the analytics that we run on on, on some of the data that we we have. Um, so Harpeet, that that kind of concludes my presentation. So um, I can pass that back to you. For um, or to Subs to um, to conclude. Yeah, uh, Chad. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Harpreet. Yes, yeah, so I was I was going to say let's pass it on to Subs so to uh, provide uh, his perspective. So I I I'll make you a presenter. Give me one second. Absolutely, Harpreet. I was just wondering if Chow can spend just one minute to kind of uh, show the product uh, which actually uh, contributed to make the whole solution work. Chow, do you have a slide like that that you can quickly show? Uh, yeah, it's the slide I showed earlier. Let me, um, let me share my screen. So, like I mentioned, we teamed up with Oracle because Oracle in their cloud solutions is kind of our one-stop one shop to running all of our solutions, right? To go from creating the campaigns all the way to the integration of the actual Fitbit and Apple devices to actually creating the, the, the nice engaging UI um, that, that shows all the data. So 
you know, we use Container Cloud, we use IoT Cloud, we use Database Cloud Service. So all of our data, all of our data runs on the database in Database Cloud Service. Um, we also do um, data extracts from our database, um, pull that into a separate schema within BI Cloud Service, and then we do data replications over to the BI Cloud so that uh, the data scientists or the, um, the data analysts can go in there and mine the data and, and, and run the data there. Um, we also have mobile, the mobile apps that we're running that I didn't show you because it's very hard to show in a presentation mode, but we use mobile cloud service for that. Connecting, uh, connecting the wearable devices, uh, we use IoT Cloud for that. And then to create campaigns, we use a SaaS solution from Oracle called um, Eloqua or Marketing Cloud um, on the back end. And then, um, and, um, and then again, uh, the, the rich user interface, the UI, we use Apex for that, that, that has a combination of CSS, um, HTML5, and, and JavaScripting. Perfect, man. Okay. So, Harpreet, what I can do is if you can pass the controls to me, I can just, uh, you know, take a couple of uh, minutes and explain my thoughts and uh, what we want to also do after that is open this to a Q&A, if that's okay with everybody. So guys, uh, my role as an Alliance Director is to bring to companies and create ecosystems. So the picture that you have uh, on your screen basically shows where the future lies as we keep moving, right? So we were in the industrial age and you took a lot of land and resources to make things happen, then we moved into the information age. And now very naturally we are completely in the digital age, right? So what we are observing on the business side, of course we talked about big data and software and cloud, which you can actually see over here, but a lot of changes are happening with the business as well, which is leading to platforms and creation of business ecosystems, resulting in like strategic cooperation, which is kind of my role between Oracle and Accenture. And I believe that as we keep moving forward, we're going to have a lot of connectivity happening between the business and, you know, cloud, for example. So how is Accenture kind of, um, and, and, you know, you heard the Accenture play. So I want to quickly explain to you how Oracle is looking at it, right? So Chow mentioned a couple of software that were used to make it work. Now, if you look at the Oracle strategy to kind of, you know, move the whole thing to the future, we are observing that Oracle is kind of very complete with a suite of applications which Oracle had, which is now moving into the SaaS, whether it is ERP or whether it's human capital management or customer experience, Oracle has a complete piece of it. Then comes the middleware piece, right, which Chow also talked about, which is the Java piece, you know, the big data pieces, the BI, the mobile pieces, and very naturally we also have our own databases. We've always been superb when it comes to databases, ETL, all that stuff, or, you know, managing databases as well. And we also acquired Sun long time back, so we have a great infrastructure as well. So if you look at how Oracle looks at the uh, IT scenario, the roadmap, and how to help businesses scale and transform themselves, I believe that Oracle is very well fit because we are kind of complete. So I'm going to uh, kind of turn it over to Harpreet and the audience so we can actually hear from you, get your feedback, understand what you guys are also seeing in the market. If there are questions for Chow or for me, happy to answer that. So over to you, Harpreet. Let's make this interactive. Wonderful. Uh, well, th thank you very much, uh, both Chow and Sumashish. It's uh, been great listening to you, and uh, especially the use cases around uh, healthcare and uh, insurance and claims. So it's very fascinating. So we, uh, I'll ask the audience to uh, enter your questions on the question panel. Uh, we have uh, a few here. Uh, let's start with the uh, the first one. Uh, how, and I think, Chow, this is probably meant for you. How long does it take to build 
a wellness uh, platform like the one you're showing? Uh, great question. So these, these are the questions that I was asked by our clients as well. And, and as you know, building robust wellness platforms could take months and years to do, right? Especially with all the, um, all the things you have to consider, you know, campaigns, building out surveys, building out badges and gamification. So what we've done, the solution I just showed you, we built that in three weeks, right? Now it's not perfect, right? Um, but we, we built something that can be stood up because it's in the cloud, because we're using lightweight architectures and lightweight languages, and we're building it for mobile users. Um, so everything that, you, that I just showed you around analytics, around the UI, around connecting to the, 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 the devices, took us three weeks to build, and it took us another a week, uh, two weeks to test. And so overall, it's probably about a month you know, to build that. And we actually have a client right now that actually bought it, and we just deployed that to them. Um, and now they're running a pilot on this to to look at their internal wellness program. But eventually, uh, this is an insurance company. Eventually, maybe putting that as as a service and then providing that to their customers. And 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 it's a low cost way to build their own internal wellness program because they want the flexibility to make changes to the platform. They want, they want the flexibility to customize the screens, customize the functionality, you know, customize the different campaigns they do. They want full control of the whole thing. And, and, and if you buy a wellness program or platform from like a SaaS solution, you, you, know, you pretty much are limited to what they can offer and, then, and the features and functions that they have. But uh, the, the uniqueness of this solution is it's fully customizable and then we can, from an agile perspective, we can change the features and functions relatively quickly. But to initially build out um, the, the initial foundation took us about three weeks to build and then another two weeks to test. Well, that's pretty impressive. Uh, you know, there's a lot of speed to market there. Uh, yes. So we have another question uh, around how insurance companies are looking at this and whether they are uh, willing to subsidize such IoT endeavors and uh, programming around wellness. I think I can take that unless Subs has a, has a comment on that. But um, the the research that we that we've seen is that now more and more insurance company wants to wants to put in a wellness program as part of their services, right? So I don't know I don't know about everybody else, but at Accenture <clears throat> we also have a wellness program that's part of our kind of insurance benefits package, right? And and the problem with that is. Um, it's there, it's available for me, but I'm not really engaged. I don't really see the use for it unless they give me free stuff, right? Or encourages me to give me information on health and how I can improve my life, right? And so this company that we, we, we talked to, they, they want their own customized wellness platform because their niche is to educate employees on how to eat healthier, how to, how to exercise healthier, how to be more active, little things like taking the stairs versus the elevator can go a long way, like I mentioned earlier, right? And they want to bake all that into their custom platform. So they really can't do that with these big commercial solutions. Um, but, but nowadays, insurance companies, in order to be competitive, they have to add in an engaging wellness program. But to be an engaging wellness program, you have to really engage with the users to use it. You also have to incentivize them, get them to be uh, constantly being engaged so that they're, they're willing to use the product and in return their health information can be turned over to the insurance company so they can run analytics on top of that, right? And, and so more and more, uh, at least I'm seeing insurance company baking in wellness programs, but the question now is how much do they want to spend on their wellness program and how fast they want to build this um, internally or externally for their customers. So I'll just uh, add to what you were saying. So probably three things, but I'll uh, stress on the first two. I'm observing a lot of these insurance companies are actually restarting their wellness programs so they can, you know, test drive these wellness programs and then connect the data back into the actuarial sciences, which is, you know, some of these are very naturally run by data scientists that are on the call today. So that is definitely a reality. We are absolutely observing that. Now, we are also observing a shift where uh, companies like uh, construction or, say, retail 
are also using these wellness programs, right? So you can just do a Google on Levice and say put wellness and you'll be able to see a couple of articles that are also coming up, right? I think the industry is changing, which is the third point which I want to say. The industry is absolutely changing. People want to buy into the technology, but as Xiao explained, until there's an engagement piece and a marketing piece, you know, I don't think people will buy into it which is the reason there needs to be integration and flexibility, not just like a, not, not just like a wellness, here's wellness for you, go and you know, make us profitable. It doesn't work like that, right? So one of the big challenges, what we have observed, which is the third point is, given a wellness program, who's gonna pay for it? Is it HR? Is it actuaries? Who's driving it? So those are some of the questions that are still um, on answer mode, guys. So over to you, Harpreet. Great. So uh, we have two more questions that are kind of related. The first one was a comment around uh, whether instead of using smileys, if one can use metrics that come out of the something like a Fitbit, like duration of sleep, quality of sleep, movements, etc. And the second question is related to, again, the data, that where do you get the data on everyday activities of people wearing the wearables? Do you have collaboration with wearable device manufacturers to get access to that data? Uh, so I, I, I guess uh, if you can address those two together. Sure. Um, so I, I don't think I did a good job of showing the sleep, but we do track sleep on the demo. And so I, meant, I showed you guys the smileys, right? What we do is we tie the smileys to your sleep, right? And so, um, so these are operational reports that we created. I can show you off, offline on that, but these operational reports that we created shows your average sleep. So if you're constantly tired and you're constantly having low energy, we can look at the sleep data and tie the two metrics together and see, are you not sleeping? Are you getting three hours of sleep a day or are you getting 12 hours of sleep a day? If you're getting 12 hours of sleep a day, that may be too much sleep. Or if you have, if you have a good nine to, you know, typically six to eight hours is a good average sleep, right? And you're still having low energy and you're still having and you're still not happy and you're still stressed out, that means there's something else that's wrong with you. And so that data can help do interventions and have one-on-one -on -one conversations with, with those individuals because the analytics doesn't add up, right? The data doesn't add up. Um, so, we, so we do pull the sleep data off of the Fitbit um, and the Apple Watches and we do store that in the system and we also tie that back to the mental and, the mental and emotional metrics that we pull from there. We also pull and, and see if your step counts or your calories burn translates to your sleep as well, right? Or, or other metrics like, um, your, you know, the, the average number of floors that you climb, well, floors may be a bad example, but water, right? Um, do, are you consuming enough water and, and is water contributing to your step counts? Because typically when you're exercising, you want to drink more water as opposed to drinking sugary drinks, right? Um, and, and so is there a correlation between the amount of water that you drink and the, because for me, I don't drink a lot of water and I exercise. And so I'm always dehydrated. So by running a water campaign, it motivates me to drink, to be more conscious about drinking water and then logging all my water that I consume. Right. So, um, that was the, I think that was the first question. Um, Harpreet, what was the second question? I think you, you, you've you answered, uh, yeah, sorry, the second question was around how you're getting the data. Is this through APIs or some partnerships with the ah, device right. manufacturers? Yep. Right. So <clears throat> the uh, the way we pull data, the raw data from the actual wearables, so Fitbit, we pull the APIs from Fitbits because Fitbit stores all of their own data in the cloud. They have their own cloud, and all we do is we make subscription API calls to their cloud to retrieve the individual. Now, we need consent. So the individual who's wearing the, the Fitbit, they have to consent that, uh, that Accenture or whoever uh, who's running the wellness program is retrieving their data on their behalf. So there has to be a consent form, they have to sign it, and then we get the keys from Fitbit, and then we pass that key along to the API call through the security protocol, and then that's how we retrieve their data. And then and we retrieve steps, calories, sleep, water, distance run, um, floors and all that stuff, right? <clears throat> so anything that, that Fitbit tracks, we can pull. For the Apple devices and the iPhones and stuff like that, we build a custom app that connects to the health kit, <clears throat> and then we use the, the, the 
ID of the actual phone to identify the users as the key to pull in that data. So there's a direct call between our app that we built on the iPhones and the, uh, the Android phones, and then that will make an API call, gather all the data from the Apple de uh, device, and then make an API call to our, our platform to uh, store the, uh, the raw data. So everything is API based. There's a, there's a gateway and there's a manager that manages all that. Um, and, and so the, the standard protocol is APIs. Well, wonderful. Well, I think uh, we are uh, out of time. Uh, uh, if there are any other questions, you know, p uh, please feel free to email them. Uh, this, there's an email address uh, on the screen. And, uh, or, or send them to uh, us uh, at Xprofi and we will get those answered. And really appreciate everyone's time today. Have a wonderful day. Take care, everyone.